All right, we're back. We're gonna do another project today. This I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe it's not raining out. We're underneath the white tarp. It's winter time. I just got back from St. Martin, and I gotta get this project going. But as you know, the transmission blew up a little while ago, and that's all repaired and done and getting ready to be put back in here. But uh, before we put the transmission in, I wanted to change out the spring plates because, as you know before, some of the stuff that was done on the bus is a little little not so cool it's okay it's fine you know if you're going to the shows and whatever but I want a bus that's gonna run really good really strong really safe so these spring plates are pretty much homemade which uh, they were converted from buses which you know it's fine they took the when a bus is lowered as you know this bus was a scraper uh, they took the uh, reduction boxes off of it um, and then they put a type 3 rear end in it uh, that blew up and uh, and then they made these spring plates uh, you can see the weld marks and the grinding it's just eh, it's not good you can see a very small section has been channeled right here to give it clearance against the stopper as you bring the spring plates lower to get the ride height lower uh, you get closer to the stopper so you have to take out a bunch of material so it doesn't bang bang and hit that because you also have to take out the rubber stop here but anyway so that's why I don't like that. Um, so what I ended up getting, which is a really cool product from Bus Boys, is the adjustable spring plate uh, style, which is you know basically what I have on my Porsche, the race cars and whatnot. This allows you to set the uh, corner balance on it. So when these are on here, you can adjust them finite. So when you go get it aligned, you can really make it precise in the rear end. It's also a lot thicker. It's just obviously a much better piece. You can see it's nice and thick right through here. But again, as I was explaining, you know, some of the problems, not a problem that we're gonna run into is that the bus isn't gonna ride as low as it used to, which kind of bums me out a little bit, but I don't know where it's gonna end up in its ride height. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with it in its uh, basically highest position, put it here some way uh, to make sure I'm optimizing whatever clearance I have. And, you know what, if it hits that stopper, I might have to redo all this whole project, but you know, I'm willing to take that chance. But before we get started on all that, all right, so we're back. Um, again, uh, as I was talking before, I'm a little concerned about the ride height, uh, you know, being too high. Uh, so what I want to do before we get started is just kind of take some measurements, kind of get a lay of the land and kind of just conceptualize what, how in the heck this is going to work out. So one of the specialty tools you should have is a protractor. This one's a magnet and basically sticks on and you can get the angle here of that uh, spring plate. So you can see a little indicator, a little white line. Looks like uh, just a little over two, five, six degrees. So then the top should be parallel, so it should be six degrees. Yep. And also you wanna, you know, just kinda take a score line here to make sure where your old trailing arms are. And then obviously again, always looking at this distance here between the block uh, or the stop and the trailing arm. All right, so now we're gonna measure that gap between the stop and the spring plate and it's one and three quarters right there at the leading edge. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get ready. Well, we're gonna pull the spring plates off of there. So the first thing you gotta do is pull the, the plate off here, these four. They're 17 millimeter bolts and I already tested and they didn't seem to be on that hard. So basically you just take those off in a, in a kind of a diamond or crisscross pattern you don't want to just take one out by itself because then you might have a chance of uh, flexing or twisting or bending this plate here so you, know, you kind of just take them all out till they're loose and then you can just go ahead and grab it grab whatever one you want and take it all the way out all right let's see what it looks like under there i gotta grab a screwdriver now you don't have to have one of these hooked ones, but again, like tools, uh, you can use a flat screwdriver, but you can see that just pops right off. There's a little rubber uh, bushing in there. You can see that that's gonna basically just fit back over there. 
All right, we got the plate off, and now we're gonna go ahead and pry the uh, spring plate off the splines. Um, you see my fancy screwdriver. You can do this again with a flat screwdriver, but basically just get in behind there and pop that off. You can see how it's just coming right off that torsion bar. And again, because this has been done recently, this doesn't come apart very difficult without any real difficulty. <laughs> I've had to wrestle some of these. I've had to use heat. I've had to do a lot of different stuff. Don't think that's as easy as it gets. But anyway, there's the torsion bar. And that actually looks like a pretty good one. All right, so we're going to go ahead and find the position for the spring plate. Um, again, these this spring plate comes with a new bushing on the inside. Basically just fits right in there. But for what we're doing right now is we're not going to we're not going to use that bushing cuz basically we're just kind of trying to figure out where this is going to hang. So, uh, basically just kind of find the splines. Usually it's easier than that. Oh, that looks too high. I got nothing. No travel. That one. That one's pretty good. Uh, again, I've set this up 50-50 to kind of give me an angle. But as you can see, we've lost all of our, our bottoming out clearance against the stop. So there's another one right there. That one looks kind of cool because you can see I can get my adjustment all the way down to that scratch line for our distance here. And then uh, I take my protractor. Let's look at the angle here. Well, I've lost about five degrees in angle there, so that means I will have lost some ride height. Oh, actually, I've increased ride height, but I don't know by how much, but again, uh, we've got this distance here, which is important. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set it up in this position, uh, and then uh, once I get the motor, transmission, and all the heavy stuff on it, get a couple buddies to jump up and down on the bumper, we'll go ahead and make the adjustments here, because obviously I can go lower, as uh, the adjustment allow me to do that now. So that's good news. So I think we're gonna go ahead and set it up right there. Uh, take the spring plate off, put the bushing on, it slips in there, no problem. Now again, this can be a little bit more difficult with the bushing on there. Of course I could try it with it on the spring plate and see how that works. the wrong spline there we go now we're going to take this plate again bolt it over the top oops <laughs> wrong direction and we're going to use the bolts to help pull that plate in there because it needs some help because as you saw that new bushing in the back there helps it resists the, uh, the easy on so I'm gonna need to get a clamp and then I'm gonna clamp that together so I can use that to pull the uh, spring plate on there all right so we've got uh, one bolt in the plate now and as you know there's new bushings in here well there's new bushings on the inside we're gonna replace the outside one here later but what you want to do is to, to clamp those bushings in because they're tight you know you got to get it closed in so you can put some bolts in it just kind of go through with your vice grips and uh, give a little pinch on it and then that helps put it in there so then you basically you know put in another bolt we try to one on the same side here yeah loosen that up a little bit all right and then you want to take well any any kind of leverage kind of thing hopefully you've got enough clearance to get a little bit of a bite. I'm just using the Allen wrench to align the hole. Looks like I got a good bite there. So then we'll take the last one. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And that is way stronger too. Oh man, it's gonna be so nice. Super excited. All right, I think we're done with this side. All right, so today, uh, as you saw, we, we put in the adjustable spring plates um, as part of a larger project, as, as, we, as you've seen and, and heard before. I'm rebuilding or putting the new transmission in there that's been specifically designed to low ride or a bus. Uh, but again, this transmission's got the freeway gears, taller gears, it's going to be super cool, super fun. But uh, today, 
you have everything you need to do to basically lower the rear end of your bus using adjustable spring plates. Um, obviously you need to do the transmission as well. But uh, another thing uh, I wanted to mention is that you know I'm going to be playing with that ride height, doing the corner balance, making sure the front end is the right height. I'm going to be doing a lot of adjustments on it. So I didn't put any Loctite or anything on those adjusters. But once I find the, the, the sweet spot on it, I'll definitely be locking those down with some Loctite in there so that they don't uh, move around or get loose. So anyway, continuing on the bus project. It's winter time. It's cold, but things are coming together. I uh, got my gas tank back. Got it resealed. A uh, funny story there is, uh, you know, sometimes I get so excited I forget to ask for uh, how much things are going to cost. Uh, <laughs> the original quote on the reseal on this thing was something like $349. I almost died because uh, obviously you can uh, buy them for cheaper than that. But uh, because I buy so many parts and I try to be fair, uh, they charged me cost. So that was really cool. But... I think looking forward, I will be learning how to reseal my own gas tank. So maybe in the future, we'll do a little DIY on that. But there's a lot of YouTube videos out there on how to reseal gas tanks. So anyway, see you guys all soon. Had fun today. Thanks.